If George is watching, he's probably laughing right now. She's probably, these two clowns don't even know how to do an English accent. They're probably doing Scottish. Yeah, probably Fucking that. McGregor. On the phone to sign up for a craft and a pay packet with the same old unemployed age bracket. Oh, God. So that's what it sounds like when a dog dies. <laughs> Hi, baby. How you doing, baby? We got dicks. Yo, we jungle doing our beats in this bitch. What's up, man? Jeez. Y'all gonna turn my hair back, man. I'm gonna get my fucking hair. Yo, if this anyone shit. wants to sponsor us and owns a donut shop, <laughs> shit. We will take donuts as bribes. Exactly. Why well, just bribe someone for mine? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so uh, we, we're on this a little late, but not that late because there's been so much shit dropping. We haven't had time to get to it. We get into it now. So we did the first single, and of course, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about Georgia Smith. Beautiful. Uh, young young singer, uh, only 21 years old. Um, she's yeah, turned 21. I feel like definitely her uh, her Insta and um, other other following shit. Like she uses her, not only is her voice amazing, but she's also a very beautiful woman. I, I also feel like the way that she's catered towards selling her beauty in a way along with her music really helps. Really helps sell. You know she's English too. She's got an English accent. Oh, bro, are you serious? Have you heard her talk? I don't need to, man. Bro, then I know I love her music. So just That's keeps... my weakness. <laughs> it's all our weaknesses. Yeah, man. Anyway, she's dropped an album called Lost and Found. A lot of you have asked us to, to review it. We reviewed her latest track. We're fans of her features and, and her voice. And mm -hmm. yeah. we Jungle Beats. So we're going to check out this album, eat some donuts. So enjoy his munching and crunching. I'm Alexander Sandalis. I'm a Krusty Buns Jr. We are Jungle Beats. Lost and Found. <laughs> oh my God. She got me feeling like a fuck in this donut. You're talking about me, you're talking about me, Georgia, right? All these donuts. Looks like you're dribbling shit, mate. Oh, it's a bit there, mate. <laughs> shit. Wait for the comments. Do you like the donuts more than the music? <laughs> yes. No, that's actually very good. It is. The voice control is amazing. Yeah. Man, this sounds like something that came out like the, the early 2000s, man. Even the cover looks like something that would come out like, like, like you know, like a Leia, B-Child, like, like just that sort of like era. I really think what you're saying is accurate with George Smith being kind of the second reminding of Amy Winehouse yeah, could can, become a similar mm, type of artist very different voices but you can hear the influence in the way that she uses her voice to same yeah. tones and yeah. same same mel melodies so yeah. uh, I really like that about her and uh, I got massive like feels of like more early early to mid 2000s sort of like R&B like even the cover of the album has that sort of like I said like Aaliyah like, like TLC just has that sort of feel to it George's vocal performances it was beautiful as as Per expected, and the theme she was touching on, uh, for, you know, she's like, I don't know if, I, in a, like talking about a relationship, I don't know what I want, and I don't know because, like, I don't know if you're right for me because I don't know exactly what I want. That's kind of the the the, the theme that I got from that track. It's been talked about many times. She's only 21; she's still exploring these things, mm. and something a lot of people our age can relate to. Mm. So I think a lot of people will relate to this, unlike the Jay Z Beyonce album, yeah. where we can't relate as directly. Yep, I'm already like relating to this track compared to anything that Jay-Z Beyonce did, so great voice control too. It's a strong opener. Oh yeah, early 2000s. Early 2000s, mid 2000s, man. There's light keys echoing in the back. Yeah. Hey, 
Hi, baby. Hi, everyone, baby. Call me, baby. You look beautiful, darling. Hey, baby. song yeah um, you got it, man no i just think um the lyric the direction she went in and conceptual in that song it's i think it's quite a mature self-reflective approach for a 21 year old mm. um you know questioning like you know everyone has that experience like you meet somebody and it's like oh you know this is this is the one this is the one right yeah and also when you're younger as well like you get to a stage where every little thing that person does you sort of you sort of like just think about all the time and like you go crazy about and it's true, when you're younger, you finally get something that you really want, such as a relationship that you've been chasing. And once you're in it, you're just like, once you've got it, you're just like, oh, I don't want this anymore. But it's the self-reflection and maturity when she says lines like, I need to grow and find myself before I let somebody love me. Mm. It's that line that takes some people literally a decade, two decades to Do learn it. or they never learn it. Well, people just stay in a relationship for so long since high school and they just stay that for eternity. They never get a chance to love themselves because they just get so accustomed to the life they're already living and they feel it, trapped. It's exactly. And it's like you're mm. looking for this, like, it's like you're half a person. You're looking for another half to connect you instead it's, of being a whole. It's a big reason why I've been single since I've been 19, man. Mm. Because I've just constantly been trying to love myself more and more and more and get to a stage where it just happens. I've never been looking for it. Like so, and loving yourself is a huge man. If you, if you love someone more than yourself, you, you ain't doing it right. I be- think that's what's good about, not to talk about Kanye again, but the way he preaches that in his music and his interviews, I, I really like that. Mm. Yeah, that was a really good track. And also a really cool instrumental too. Good throwback again to the, the early mid-2000s, like really living it up. Yeah, man. Like Jarrell says. fault that track it makes so much more sense here right now the concept of the album mm-hmm. as a single i had a few problems with some of the repetition uh a few other things i can't quite remember but i always loved her voice but here 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 and like i said i'm terrible with lyrics but just here and exact what she's talking about has a lot to do with the first two tracks and with the conceptualize of the album so right where did i go uh when did the sunrise how did i fall got lost in the moonlight mm. these are all very like relating to the lost and found mm-hmm. this album seems like her first debut album she's finding herself as a human being mm. and the, the last track we just heard she wrote when she was 16 what 16 really? bro god damn and the fact so, that she included, yeah man another great track yep I have nothing more to say now hold on that wasn't the track we reviewed was it this was the one I swear I've heard that before though or maybe you have February 3rd we reviewed this then where have I heard that other track before I don't know man did you play it I don't know play it well tired of falling down to Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember. Once again, getting 
lost. You thought the track should end, yeah. But then she keeps going with the what do you call it? You think the archer should end here? Was it before? Yeah. Yeah. Just conceptual. It's much better on a, on a second listen because we get it within the context. Once again, talking about just just trying to get lost, trying to trying to lose yourself so you can find yourself, and just really uh, encapsulating on that. I like it a lot more now. I'm loving the production more. I still think that it could have ended a little sooner, but I'm not fussed. After hearing the first three tracks, and also the track beforehand, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was a single review, but it wasn't. But I have heard it before many times. I don't know if I've got it on a playlist at work or if a friend plays me all the time, but that other track, I've heard that a lot. So, and it's, and it's dope. I fuck with that. I really like jo George's holding her own here so far. No features for a debut album. Like, that's you got to be courageous to do, I think, that a little bit. Like... She's holding her own. I like yeah, it. Yeah, she could have got features because she was featured on Black Panther album. She's been featured in a few other things. So she could have if she wanted to, but this seems to be like, like you said, she just wants to ride. You want to hear our full thoughts on this single? Y'all know what it is. It's on the channel. <laughs> Sounds like she's talking to somebody. She's like, this time I'm gone, even better now. I've left you, but I've lost a lot of trust over time and I've got lost in love. Got hearts broke, so I know why I wouldn't trust. So it's like, sounds like this person has uh, cheated on her in some way. Well, I see. So that's why she's saying wasted or like waste everything that we've built up together. Right. Just this one moment. Hmm. I think that's a, you know, everyone, every, a lot of artists have this version of their track. Someone yeah. cheats on them. I think it's a nice Unless way you're to ugly do it. as fuck. So that's why you'll never have a track like this. <laughs> I don't know, like these these topics have been talked about a lot, but because of her the unique the unique sound of her voice, mm. I seem to be liking a lot of it. I love the hook on that. It's got a lot of passion behind it, doesn't it? It does, man. Just the way she layered her vocals as well for the hook. the The piano was beautiful. The drums, the light drum patterns were really nice. It's really cool because I feel like we started this album off with a lot of sort of, like I said, mid early two thousands, but now it's getting a bit more contemporary. It's really interesting that she's gone from like the one after talking about the whole break. Exactly so right. Like, really good, really good so far in terms of keeping conceptualized. Yeah, I agree. When I'm falling out, didn't think I'd get for love. Every time I hold her back, you console me when really I'm lonely. Even if I feel this way, I don't wanna feel this way when I. I'm afraid of these 
That was fucking powerful. Mm. Vocal. Instrumentally, just one of the most powerful tracks on this album so far. I'd be nitpicking right now if I was to find something I didn't like about it. Probably the track I like the least. Nice. This is where this is good. I mean, I will admit her vocal display was powerful. Uh, lyrically, she was on point again about you know wanting to find so badly, but also being afraid to let them in after past relationships she's had. So it's like the risk of finding the one as well. Like, so I admire that, but I thought that it was probably her most unchallenging song in terms of structure okay that's just how i feel i feel like the way that she sort of started the verses went to the chorus the production did all the work for it in terms of using her voice i don't know i just i just feel like this was just kind of not lazy structurally but just not as challenging as the as the past tracks well i think some well sometimes you can let the production be dominant mm. sometimes you can let the lyric lyrical power be dominant mm. but i can see how powerful this song could be and i'm definitely gonna give this further listens so i can you know Critique it further. What's what's with the what's with the hands, mate? What's with the what's with the what are you juggling? Lyrics. I Instrumental. I ain't gonna judge it straight away. This is the first listen. Remember, so my my thoughts can change. Can they? Nah, mate. They're fucking staying the same. <laughs> mate, why don't you think something? They said exactly how you fucking think. There's no point changing me mind. I'm an old fashioned cracker. Let's keep going. <laughs> You're an old fashioned cracker, huh? Right, jats, fucking wrists, shortbread creams. Yeah! <laughs> it's nice to sit down for a review for once. First feature? That's her. Sounds like it's with somebody. It sounded like her voice. Like really low. The layer sounded like it. That's um, most of the tracks have had Georgia talking from her perspective, right? Mm. Of how she's experiencing love. And now this is the first track I've seen like she's flipped it and she's talking from her partner's perspective of like trying to let this person into her. Kind of, you know, they have their demons as she's trying to... She's trying to get them to make her open up? or them to, to make them open up, to be vulnerable to her. Uh, That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, once again, I, I didn't feel anything too special about this track. I do, I do admit, probably lyrically once again, she's saying it a bit and keeping it quite conceptual, but I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm tired or if I'm just not feeling it. It's just, I just found that track a little boring. A little boring, huh? A little boring, darling. I found that a little boring, you know. Well, so like, yours is over the top. Yeah, it's like, yeah, a little boring mate, up. Mate, I can't do it normal. Like, how am I meant to do it like normal, you know? Well, you gotta, you gotta relax your face, you know? I'll relax my face a bit, so it's a bit if I do it a little so like this. If George is watching, she's probably laughing right now. She's probably, these two clowns don't even know how to do an English accent. They're probably doing Scottish. Yeah, she's probably fucking like, McGregor! <laughs> fucking Conor McGregor! And she's probably all like, maybe we should do the whole review like this. Maybe she should like, get back. <laughs> you know what? That's not a bad idea, you know. You want to go off with some tea after? A cup of tea? Mate, I don't drink fucking tea. I drink fucking coffee, bro! <laughs> oh, I drink the fucking coffee, bro! Oh, I think this review's firing a little bit off the handle. You want to go to the next track? Yeah, let's go to the next track so that she doesn't fucking uh, put honey in our bee wax, bro, bro. <laughs> you say blue bats? No, I said blue testicles. <laughs> My favourite kind. <laughs> Shadow, what you're getting off the 
I think it's better because she's showing us something different. Towards the end of the song, she switched up her vocal delivery. Mm, and the sample from Dizzy was nice too. Definitely. She's kind of tapping yeah. her foot into hip hop. I love the switch up with the vocals, like you said. I like the, the keys on that track. The drum pattern was nice. Like, that worked me back up a bit in a way. Like, I'm st like don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm sitting here like fucking zombie like, but I was paying attention to that track and I fucked with it. That was, that was a really good track. I think the one thing that's going to stop Georgia Smith from becoming just another one of those artists that have a nice voice that get repetitive is if she continues to challenge herself over her career and does things like this and keeps it interesting. Mm. I feel like she might get stuck in the lane of her own voice and not step outside of her comfort zone. Oh, especially when you're so young, man. And also the fact that her album didn't sell very well the first week. This one? Yeah, I think I did like 15K. Yeah. But when she has 200,000 followers on Twitter and Instagram... I don't know. You got to look at streaming numbers. You got to look at fucking that's streaming others. and pure sales. I think it did like 15k. I think it did like huh. 5k pure and like 10k streaming. Interesting. I don't know, man. It didn't do very well. Regardless, we're here. Maybe we can help. Hopefully, man. Yo, I'm on a lifeboat, motherfucker. I don't know if the boat's gonna save my life, even though it's called a lifeboat. Bars. Someone might put their arm out to help you. I don't know. I would if I saw somebody drowning in a sea of self confusion. I want to be the one to try and understand why the tide ain't coming in. So why are all the witches still afloat? See, all my brothers drowning even though they need the boat. Man, that ship ain't helping anyone. See, the ships are getting bigger for the greed of wasteful men. So can kids with the lies before they even got to ten? Mm. Majority might fall with a tax bracket. Oh. So minority might jump to the next bracket. On the forms and sign up. Yo, do you ever listen to Loyal Kanana's album? No. I, you're gonna make a reference. I was like, you didn't listen to my favorite album of last year? Sorry, bro. I don't think I have. You never listen to fucking. 509, 604. Oh, Joy, Joy Benson, Ryder, dude. <laughs> the fucking. The Love the Beef Logic. Oh, oh Jay fucking Joy, uh, to, uh, see ya. Fucking Jason my Derulo. <laughs> my second favorite album of last year. Yeah. Oh, Jared, uh, jo 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 Joy, no, John, Joy. Joy jo Lucas. Joy, Joy, I knew there was a Joy in there. You didn't listen to that either, so you know, we're even. Yeah, but it wasn't your number one. Fuck. Anyways, for you, y'all that know Loyal Kana and the song Damsel Fly, very similar guitar strings, very similar drums. In fact, I would love to hear Loyal on there. One of my favorite tracks of the album. It's fun to hear Georgia just playfully spitting and just having some beautiful melodies over some light guitar. It's fun. Hmm. And also she says, she's like, why do we all fall? Yeah, it's a nice little metal, melody in between, but it's, it's refreshing to hear Georgia kind of her, her actual real voice. Yeah. And her speak and kind yeah. of not rap. It's also, it's also, I kind of get it because the whole album's about being lost and found. Like in a way, it's like she sort of found herself in a way. How so? Just the way she was spinning, she was sort of being a bit more fun oh, with vocally, it. Oh, vocally, like, yeah. like musically. Yeah. Like it's like pure kind of thing. Exactly. That's, yeah, I really that's like kinda, I kind of get that sort of foulness in that, like just accepting sort of who she is in a way. I'm exploring also a different, slightly different theme. She's talking more about the state of her her community and her environment and the mm. people around her and lower social economic uh, statuses, mm. you know, using the metaphor of a lifeboat to, to help save people and like how he's falling and and not help and like not grabbing the lifeboat and blah 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 you know metaphors that's cool man that's a great great little freestyle yeah I've enjoyed the last two tracks you're bringing it back for me Georgia how could we know that there would be some more does the lightest touch you ever give me mate <laughs> you watch the fucking thighs mate so far to go donuts went straight there <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you why did he shiver? A twitch, bro. Don't twitch. I can't help it, bro.
very top. Right. How was I to know this would be a last goodbye? You belong to the stars in the clouds. Oh, that's one of the best tracks right that's there. That's chilling. It is in the way. Don't, 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 don't even try. I was saying liquor because the way she says in the clap, like in the clap, I was like, the way she says it was just very different. I didn't, until I looked at the <laughs> lyrics, I didn't get it. She's referencing someone who's, um, who's passed away and it makes sense looking at the lines. You've already reached the light, but the bells will ring for you. Man, I'm getting too many tears this week from the music, man. <laughs> Fucking... Nas, like a kid see ghost. Now George making me cry. Like uh, I, I think it's a, it's a it's an incredibly sincere but somber track, and oh. it's that's special. I'm glad she did that. I just didn't expect for her to shine some of the hardest on the album on a purely acoustic track. And one thing I've noticed about her vocals too that they've done all, all through this album is they give her voice a slight echo. I didn't notice that yet. Like if you notice on all the tracks, they well, not all, but I think nearly all. So they give her voice like a really slight echo. It's kind of mm -hmm. like how. Like with a lot of, say, artists like Arctic Monkeys, they put that slight, that megaphone effect on his voice, like, yeah, which the, yeah, yeah. It's a Beatles star. So, like, she kind of has, like, an own effect on her voice. So, she does something very similar to give her voice a different feel to it. But definitely one of, if not my favorite track right there. That was absolutely beautiful. Man, it makes sense. You know, the realest truth. Mm. You're able to make amazing music from the realest truth. Yo, I had a pet snake. Yeah. His name was Benny. Yeah. I tried to let him go. But then he called himself Kenny. The hardest thing I have done is my fault. You give me all of your time. You've been there for all of my crimes. So don't you wonder why I won't say goodbye. I won't even cry. You always cry. See, after hearing all these seven track albums and nine track albums, like, it's going to a stage where, like, you know, longer albums might affect you, but everything George has been saying has been very on topic. And purposeful. It's like, there's no filler. For a long album, in terms of these days, there's no filler. And her voice control on this track is absolutely magnificent. Bro, if an angel could sing, it sounds something like this. Nah, I sing better. Okay. Give me an example, <laughs> bro. <laughs> So that's what it sounds like when a dog dies. <laughs> um, an angel would be this trap. <laughs> um, but no, like the, 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 the classic piano on there with the choir backing her. The choir the, just lifted. I love oh, fucking man. choirs and it was used so well. Oh. It just brought this big crescendo and just wave of emotion just... Boom. Man, it'd be impossible to masturbate to that track. That's how beautiful it was. Why do you got to bring that masturbation up right now, man? It's a fucking amazing track. It was fucking... Uh. Masturbation's an amazing track. Explain. Record for me. Look, man, that's one of my... That's one of the best tracks on yeah, this album. And yeah. Like, just in incredibly touching and... I'm going to be... Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Nah, you go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Nah, you go nah, ahead. I know bro. you want to get it out. It's like busting nut. Get it out, <laughs> dude. Why are you gonna bring up masturbation like that? Well played. Oh, it kills the most to say that I still care. Now I'm left trying to rewind the times you held and kissed me then. Oh, 
That's an incredible, beautiful way to finish the album. That track was absolutely beautiful. Awesome. Her vocal display was amazing. Her storytelling was like so intense. The way that she was, like, I didn't like pay attention to the whole song. The way that she was going on about each sort of little memory of like waking up and then like him leaving. And then she's like, pretty much the reason she's crying is not because of this is this, but because of just like what could have been. I was just like, man, that's fucking powerful. Yeah. Just the way that she was displaying every single every single line of that song, yeah. you can hear the pain aching through her voice. Every note, every was single note. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's a beautiful delivery and display. I love it. Slight acoustic tracks, all piano tracks. You notice she does really well on stripped back instrumentations. Mm -hmm. Her voice just rises above it beautifully. I think it's a really smart debut from her. I think yeah. she's tackled poppier productions. She's tackled more darker sort of productions. She's tackled a bit more, like we said, some of that early R and B production, and then we've got more minimalistic stuff. And I think she's done really well. I think it's a good way to do an album when you're starting out, not tackling too many types of productions all over the place. Yeah. She's tackled a fair few that all sort of work with each other. And each song has like all had to do with this album. Yeah, she's not tackling too many concepts, yep. right? It's all cohesive into one album. Yep, there's not too many tracks, but there's not too few and everything ties together. Exactly. Into a what I think is a very good debut album. And you yeah. know, with more listens, this could become, you know, even greater. Yeah. I personally believe this is a massive album that will grow on you. And if you have been through any of the things that she's been through in this album, you will connect with this album hugely. Mm. And you have a crowd too. You'll, yeah, she, she, I reckon she will help a lot of young and old people who have been through shit like this and yeah. come close to it. I think this is like, for someone that's 21 to put out a body of work like this. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, obviously there were tracks that I wasn't feeling too much, but I, I fuck with this. I think this is a, I think it's a good album. Potentially great. I'm very proud of George and I'm very happy with the, the body of work we got here. Agreed. I love this album and um, I can't wait to see the growth in her career. She deserves... Oh. I wish you'd got more uh, recognition for this album. Georgia, you made an amazing album. I love it. It's, it's somber, sincere and, and cohesive and mm -hmm. I think you should be very proud of it. Um, if you come to Australia, I'll probably go see you perform. Mm. Um, please go check this out if you haven't heard of her, Jungle Beats fans. Definitely. I think this is definitely an album I'm going to revisit when I'm in the mind space. Too. This is an album which you can just chuck on randomly. Maybe a few tracks like track three you can chuck on to vibe to, but this is definitely an album conceptually where you need to be in the right mind state, I believe, to tackle and really, really enjoy. Absorb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, are, we are Jungle Beats. Yeah, man. And Make sure um, to subscribe. We're going to review more artists like this. If you and any other female artists that you really like, want to review more females. We need a bigger female fan base, man. We got 5% female fan base. We're going to make that 20 You know like 3% of them are lying too. Probably just males pretending <laughs> to be fans. <laughs> Seriously though. We got dicks. Yeah. Anyways, y'all, where are the females at? I understand we cringe as fucking tall shit, but... <sighs> you know, we're Australia's hardest interracial couple. Man, we just want to... Apparently. With Jungle Beats. Um, don't smoke pine cones. Cool. I did when I was a kid. We had this big fire. I grew up on like a farm. So we had like, I used to put the pine cones in the fire and light the top of the pine cone on fire and smoke it through. Fuck, it tasted like pine. And it was terrible. My cough, my fucking lungs up. A fucking idiot I was as a kid, man. Don't smoke pine cones. We're Jungle Beats. <laughs>